Everybody's Tyler here at UIL State here in Texas talking with team number 13266. This is the uh, Droid Rage Apex team who were uh, Inspire Award winners one event, also uh, winners of the event, and then the finalist Alliance captain at Central Texas as well. And help me speak more about this robot. I have Christian, Chris, and Justin. And as we go through this, you gotta check this out. I think the big feature, of course, is gonna be that huge uh, arm that they have that's on a full turret, but just a really well robust machine, some cool programming that's going into this. All this and more coming up here on Behind the Bot. Your destination for first content, updates, and gaming. Welcome, Welcome to the fun. First updates now is supported by Kettering University. Kettering University hosts three co-op employment fairs each year for incoming and current students. Participating in the co-op employment process at Kettering is a great way to begin turning robotics experience into a professional career to earn money towards graduating debt-free. If you are a senior, it's not too late to apply at kettering.edu slash apply. So starting on your robot, talk to me about your intake, what's gone into it, uh, any changes throughout the season as well? Okay, st uh, starting with our intake, uh, we have it powered off a 435 motor, which is actually hidden behind here, so it's like we won't get damaged or anything. Um, the main part of our intake would have to be the box. Can you uh, disable it? Can you pick it up? So uh, originally we started with a full closed box where it only had one opening, but we decided to change it so it had two openings, so that way we're able to deposit from both sides coming this way, or since we're a turret, full on this way. And then we have a claw here in the middle, which allows us to clamp onto freight after it's intaked in. Was this a box when you're looking at it? Like, uh, how did you come up with the concept that you do like this type of carriage box for? Like, or did you have other ideas as well? Uh, originally, we wanted to go with like something fixed. Sure. But we realized this would be easier to be able to like take. It would be easier to travel with the freight using. Uh, this type of box. Okay. Sure. And then from the, your intake material here, did you experiment with any other type of materials at all? Yeah, we started uh, actually with uh, pneumatics tubing from the FRC. Sure. But we realized that was a little too stiff, so we wanted something more grippy, and we switched to this type of tubing that we just bought off uh, McMaster. Christian, thanks for talking to us about your uh, intake here. We're going to go over to Chris next, who's going to be talking about uh, the turret uh, on your robot as well, too. So love to see that in action as well. I think it's a really cool design. And then uh, I'd like to hear more about just from, like, when you're thinking about the time it takes uh, intake to actually deliver as well, too, how did that fit into what your match strategy was? The arm is a virtual four-bar arm, which flips out like this. What, what the process of, the, of um, intaking freight is, First, it would intake the freight, then the color sensor would detect the freight, clamp onto this, and then we would move the arm up to whatever position we want. So we can do either right, left, or back. And again, we can orient this any way we want. We can go this way, we can go this way, to whatever suits our needs. And again, this robot kind of looks rough right now because uh, most of our team joined FRC and are helping them right now in this current state. So. That's why it looks a little rough. Talking about the turret, the turret is geared two to one on a 117 uh, RPM motor. Right here on bevel gears. See, you got the, it's on a half, half inch shaft right here. So it gives it more structure when, it's, when it comes to like swinging it around and stuff like that. What other concepts did you have? You know, looking at this arm here, it's been very functional and effective for you. But when you're looking at the game wise, like any other thought process from that? And then like, how did that, uh, kind of conjoined with the intake, like did these two get born together or was it kind of two separate processes? It was, yes, it was two separate processes because we started off with a arm on an, in, an intake on an arm. Sure. And that thing was absurdly heavy, so we had to figure something out. On our version two robot, which was a six wheel V4 bar arm, this is literally was taken off from the six wheel and put onto this robot. And that's how we fixed the problem. Wanting up this robot, let's talk a little bit more about some of the other aspects here, some programming aspects and other stuff that's gone into it. So Justin's going to speak a little bit more about that and tell us uh, what's gone into uh, the rest of your robot here. Um, Programming-wise, there's a few different aspects that we have done some things to. Like, for example, the drivetrain. Um, we use field-centric drive using the IMU, and um, uh, we also have a color sensor right here that whenever it detects, um, no, it'll close this, but it'll also outtake so that that'll help it like uh, make sure we don't get any extra blocks for whatever reason. Um, uh, during autos, since we have rollers on the side here, we can basically like go up against the wall and then um, use the wall to basically relocalize our position 
because we know like what our um, our position will be against the wall. Sure. Um, our, on our camera, since it's not quite wide enough, the aperture is not quite wide enough to be able to get all three positions. Um, we only look at two of them, and then we can. And our turret, we used to use um, a design where uh, you could basically point the stick like to the right, and the turret would go exactly to the right. But uh, we've stopped doing that. Well, 13266, thanks a lot for taking the time to tell us about your robot uh, here at the uh, UIL Championship in Texas. So can't wait to see your performance uh, here as well. And uh, good luck the rest of the way. Thanks for taking the time. Thanks to Kettering University for their support of this video. Kettering University hosts three co-op employment fairs each year for incoming and current students. Participating in the co-op employment process at Kettering is a great way to begin turning robotics experience into a professional career to earn money towards graduating debt-free. If you are a senior, it's not too late to apply at kettering.edu slash apply. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now and check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.